This is McTile. A few months ago, I only had one tile to stand on, and every 1000 XP I gain, I get to unlock a new one. I can't use banks or trade other players, and I'm unlocking RuneScape one tile at a time. The goal? RuneScape's biggest challenge, the Inferno. We are at a turning point. After five months, every single skill requirement for the most impactful quest in RuneScape is completed. This quest will completely change this account, but there's one more mountain to climb. I believe I'm gonna need over 10,000 tiles to finish this grind off. The way I think about this is that I only have one thing left to do, but it's actually like 13 things packaged into one. Now that I have the skill requirements, I get to work on this massive list of pre-quests that I need before Song of the Elves. All of these quests combined are going to be thousands upon thousands of tiles that I'm not sure how I plan to stock up just yet. First up is Waterfall Quest, because this is a requirement for Roving Elves, which is a requirement for Morning's End Part 1, which is a requirement for Morning's End Part 2, which is a requirement for Song of the Elves. It's a long ladder, and you can see why we need so many tiles. It's gonna be an absolute mess. But that's okay, because I'm the one doing these quests, and you can sit back and relax and watch me use a billion tiles on all of them. Not to mention that after I finish these quests, I have an insane difficult boss fight at the end of Song of the Elves that I don't think this account is ready for just yet, but we're gonna have to manage somehow. Wait just a second. Hi, I'm a very real professional chef, and I am tired. Tired of spending hours cooking meals and then some more cleaning up the mess. And if only there were a sponsor of today's video that could help. Listen up, because I'm only gonna say this a few times. Factor has changed my life, and I really truly mean that. I've been using Factor for the last eight months as it helped me completely change my exercise and diet habits around. As someone who gets exhausted thinking about having to make or cook multiple meals, a day, Factor has completely changed my perspective. Look at all these delicious meals that will get shipped straight to your doorstep, pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes or less. And you can see what's in all of these meals. Just being able to take out a gourmet meal from my fridge and have it ready to eat in two minutes is an absolute game changer for me and I, that just can't be understated. And there's choices for any kind of diet you might be on, whether it's keto or you're trying to be calorie smart, or like me, you just want to focus on the Protein Plus meals. Give it a try. Seriously, you can click my link in the description or go to factor75.com and use code POGSETTLEDMAY40 for 40% off plus 20% off your next month. You will not regret it. Give it a shot. This is gonna be the cheapest quest I do all week, and uh, that's not saying much because it's still gonna be a couple hundred tiles, I think. The quest goes a little like this. You find this book about a strange man, then you find this key in a cave. We get this pebble from a strange little man. To enter this tomb, you need no armor or weapons, which I don't have, but I think it's counting my rune pouch as a weapon, so it's not letting me go in, even though I dropped everything I had on me. I'm just gonna have to go die to Zora to get into this next part. <laughs> While all my stuff is at Zora, I'm gonna take a trip to Entrana because I lost my Draman staff during Lunar Diplomacy. I made it into a Lunar Staff and I kind of need that thing. I use Fairy Rings for basically everything. Okay, we are reunited. Let's go finish this quest. I think all my tiles are about to disappear. Yeah, because this is a new instance of the room. Well, it's the first one off the list. Waterfall quest completed and we get a little bit of XP. At least we get some tiles back, so that's nice. You guys remember the cave we were just in for the last quest? Well, we're gonna have to go back there and enter a boxing match with a moss giant. That is pretty much this entire quest. <laughs> I mean, okay, it's a little more than a boxing match. I'm trying to honor an elven grandmother in hopes that the elves trust me enough to lead me to their town. That's the whole point of this quest. And hopefully I can honor this elven grandma because I brought zero food and this moss giant uses both melee and mage and all my stuff is a Zara right now. So I am risking literally everything. If I die here, I lose all my stuff. It won't happen though, we'll be fine. Oh, that was almost a three minute long battle and we got the consecration seed. We got to go plant this in the waterfall. I'm really glad I didn't have to leave to get food. Now we plant this seed in honor of elven grandma and uh, that is the last thing we needed to do. I get a choice between a crystal bow and a crystal shield here. I'm going to take the bow. I will get some decent use out of it. So I'm happy to take it. And that's another quest done. I would normally get a teleport crystal here, but I don't have the requirements for morning's end part one, which I'm actually not entirely sure what I'm missing here. Okay, so we've got two more quests until we can start that. 
that, and then the Morning's End line is gonna be, that's gonna be like thousands of tiles, just on like two quests, but I'm very happy with my crystal bow. I love the crystal bow. This was the best bow in the game back in 2005. Nowadays, it's a shadow of its former self, but we're trying to get the real champion of bows. Got my looting bag, so it's time to reorganize and get back to work. Sheep Herder is an extremely unfortunate quest for this account. I burned so many tiles trying to get these sheep to cooperate. All I have to do is lead these four sheep into this pen and it's quest complete. No, 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 no. Bro is going all the way back. He is going all the way back to his spawn. The perfect timing. Let's go. Another sheep down. No, what is he doing? Hey guys, how's it? Uh, How's it? How's it going? Could not finish sheep herder. I got three out of the four. All I need now are the yellow sheep, but I'm completely out of tiles. We just saved an entire city from getting infected by these sheep. Surely our reward is 3,000 coins. Being extremely tile broke at this point, I needed a new plan. I had three more quests to go and the Morning Zen series will be a couple thousand tiles on its own. It was time to introduce Plan S. The S stands for super important side goals. There are three things that I absolutely need moving forward. First off, 80 magic. I'm currently way too weak to take on the final boss of Song of the Elves. This would be a step in the right direction. I'm trying to find a way to beat this boss without using blood spells. That would require completing desert treasure, which would be another three or 4,000 tiles. But if we do have to use blood spells, 80 magic is what you want anyway. Next is 65 Slayer. This unlocks the ability to kill dust devils, which drops my best set of gloves for the Inferno. Black Dehyde Van Braces. This saves me the hassle of getting 79 crafting, an amazing shortcut for a really, really good upgrade. And finally, at some point during this week, I'll be getting 70 attack to round out my melee stats. All three goals benefit the account and all three build up a very good baseline of tiles to finish off our final prequests. I spent 20 hours over the next three days working on these goals. First using up my entire crystal bow at pest control. I'm about to spend a lot of money on magic. I invested almost 400 KGP into chaos runes so I could do my slayer task with magic and using chaos gauntlets from the family crest quest. Chaos gauntlets improved my max hit from 12 to 15 making it pretty awesome for Slayer and magic and getting two goals done at once. I'm about to be the first person in history to unironically use lunar robes as my magic gear. Okay, so normally I would have to walk all the way around the Pyre Fiends to get over to my Basilisk task, but I have some tech. I have some tech here. I've been saving these summer pies for something. I didn't know what just yet, but this boosts me up to 81 agility, the perfect agility level to use this shortcut, and that just saved me at least 100 tiles. Maybe 130, 140 just for that boost. Now I only invested, what was that, like 25 tiles to get to my Basilisk task? So for the next 20 hours, I used up all my runes, finished up a few Slayer tasks, and even got 70 attack, putting me up to 740 tiles while taking care of one of my three goals. Stocked up a bunch of pest points recently, and I'm just gonna use this on prayer. It's my toughest combat skill to train, and I probably want higher prayer going into Song of the Elves. So I'm taking my free prayer level 51. Been training a lot of magic recently, and we're almost at a thousand tiles again, so I think it's time for big chompy bird hunting. We're ready. We need a couple different things for this quest, one of which is a few wolf bones. I don't think this quest will be too bad tile-wise, and I do have a way to get these wolf bones completely tile free thankfully nice okay we got everything i needed i bought way too many feathers but we're not gonna look into that this quest goes a little like this first we make some arrows we take the inflation device we inflate a frog we use the frog as a little treat for this bird you're in the wrong neighborhood yes yes nice i feel so blessed right now cooking this delicious meal for me and my homie and that is quest complete big chumpy bird hunting i got like two tiles back from that xp reward but guess what it's time for Mornings and part one, and then Mornings and part two, and then we go into overdrive. We're gonna be doing Song of the Elves. That's what that's what that means. I am at Puro Puro. I need a magic log for Mornings and part one uh, to finish the quest. And since I don't have the wood cutting level, I'm taking my chances with nature implings, which have a 10% chance to get a magic log, but I don't have any way to bind these guys. So I'm just chasing them around Puro Puro, and it's it's not working out well for me. This one is trapped in a corner, thankfully, so. I will be able to grab this one. I don't really want to leap to get nature runes, and I 
don't have to leave to get nature. It's, that was eight minutes of uh, hunting a magic log and we got it. Nice. It's time for morning's end part one. And this part is actually not that expensive. I think I have more than enough tiles to finish this first part, but the second part is where it gets disgusting and gross. Whenever I make assumptions about how many tiles something is, you, you, know, you ever like fast forward a movie in your head? I basically fast forward the quest in my head, but for the second part, I can't really do that because I don't remember like how big the light puzzle is, how wide the room is, how long the room is. I can only do my best guess, but uh, I'm gonna say I probably don't have enough tiles uh, to finish part two right now. Anyway, we're about to get our crystal teleport seed, which means we've officially unlocked the town of Letya, and I can always get back here as long as I have this little seed on me. It's honestly a pretty useful town. It's a little niche, but there's a crafting shop here that sells pretty much every die in the game. I think it is every die in the game, and sometimes those dies are super annoying to get, and you need them for quests sometimes, so it's nice to have that. Other than that, there's a couple stores here, but mainly this is just gonna be the hub of the next three quests that we do. The quest goes a little like this. We make a little path over to the Arondar gate because we have a mourner to execute. We need his clothes. We need to infiltrate. That's what this quest is about. I bought some dyes from the Letya crafting shop and infiltrated mourner HQ. This entire quest hinges on gaining this guy's trust. He's gonna spill all the secrets about the temple of light to you. So we torture a gnome for a bit. We inflate some toads and we use those toads as ammo in our medieval sniper rifle to recolor some sheep and make people keep believing in the plague. Now this guy trusts us with top secret information and we find out they're using the Temple of Light to summon the Dark Lord. No! Quest complete, time for part two. Morning's End part two is less of a quest and more of just one big puzzle, but that puzzle is going to rob me blind of every tile I have. And it's only a baby version of the puzzle we'll be doing in Song of the Elves. So that's the scary part. That's where I'm going to be using a ton of tiles. So this is the Temple of Light. This is where the entire quest takes place. And it took me a little over a hundred tiles to get here. Just to do the first step of the quest, I have to grab this blackened crystal, which is already 200 tiles just to grab this thing and teleport out. Now we replace it with a crystal of light and we're gonna have to go make this entire puzzle work. I could save some tiles here if I don't fall. Uh, odds of me falling are decent, but okay, yep, there it is. Take two is a success. That is puzzle number one completed and uh, we've already used, well, we came here with 600 tiles. We're down to 278 after the first of eight puzzles. <sighs> okay, um, I'm gonna teleport out here. I can't really continue. That's puzzle number three. We have five more to go and I'm only on 60 tiles. So we still have the side goals and I'm actually adding another side goal, which is 76 fishing. My inventory really isn't set up for anything else. I'm gonna go get some feathers. We're gonna try to get 76 fishing. That'll probably get me like 500 tiles and that's still not gonna be enough, but it'll be a start. Fishing level of 73. As you can see, I just got 74 fish. 75! And two days later, we are all done. Uh, shark fishing unlocked, 530,000 fishing XP gained. Another side goal taken care of and uh, most importantly, 632 tiles now available. I don't think that's enough to finish Morning Zen part one, but we're gonna go see how far it gets me. I was getting absolutely ravaged in the Temple of Lights, so I'm gonna bring some prayer potions this time time so I can just consistently pray against the shades. This ought to be enough to get through the entire quest and I'll also bring some summer pies because I think the agility boost will actually be really nice for the handholds. I should uh, increase my chance of getting across them. Yes, no, on the last one. Okay, we made it to the very end. We completed the light puzzle, but we're not done yet because uh, the most annoying part of this entire thing is just now beginning. Uh, see, there are two ways you can do this next part. You can either find yourself a death talisman, not many good ways to get those. So because I can't get a death talisman in any other way, I have to bring him this entire list of 50 different items and then I can get into the death altar. So we are about to spend a lot of tiles on this list and we're gonna have to make multiple trips back to the Temple of Light to give him all these items because I can only carry so many. Unfortunately, I got a little unlucky with one of my items. It was one of the two RNG items that you can get on this list and it's the Dusty Key. The Dusty Key opens this door right here and you never even need it if you have 70 agility. So I never planned on unlocking it, but obviously since it's on this completely unrelated list now, I have to go 
get it, despite having 70 agility, specifically so that I wouldn't have to get this key. But now we're 300 tiles deep and it's too late. I need it to complete this quest. Jeez. Swampletics really let himself go. Thankfully, a lot of items on this list are pretty simple, but the ones that aren't are pretty brutal. So I seem to have made a terrible mistake. I forgot to set the light beam to hit this door before I left, which means I can no longer get through this way. So I have to take the other route to get into the death altar room. After you get into that room once, another pathway opens up and it's through the underground pass. So I'm gonna have to go through there. Honestly, it's not that bad. It was like a 25 tile mistake. It could have been a lot worse, I guess. But yeah, this is the first inventory of items. 16 items down, 34 to go. This is looking like the second most expensive item I have to get on this entire list, an archery ticket. I have to unlock the ranging guild, which I guess I was gonna to come here at some point in the future because this is where you get the 99 range cape so i guess this is technically fine it's just not ideal right now because i'm so desperate for tiles but and there we go another item down mr dwarf got another delivery of 15 items that's gonna be 31 in total 19 more to go i think this is the best spot i could find for a unicorn i don't think i had any others unlocked but there's ground unicorn horn 74 tiles left and our list is looking pretty much done i just need some oak log Crumbling Tome is going to be the hardest one out of all of these. I don't have enough tiles for that. That's near Barrows, and I don't have that unlocked. This puts us up to 46 items done. Four left to go on the list. Just got my white berries from a cave crawler. Three more items to go. The skull should be relatively easy to get. I think the best way for me to get this skull is to go to the Arceus Spellbook and teleport to the Mind Altar. There are skull spawns in the North Wilderness here. Unfortunately, I can't telegrab them. Either way, this is by far the cheapest tile method I could find for getting a skull, so I'm happy with that. That's like 20 tiles. The best way I found to get potato cactus uh, without spending 400 tiles walking to a spawn point is by killing undead druids down here. One in 50 drop rate, and I'll be able to restock some tiles to finish off the list. Plus, we can get some grubby keys. Coming back from trip number one, no potato cactus yet, but we do have three grubby keys to open. The law rune restock, we love to see that. Uh, key number three... Yes, we got some brews. Literally exactly what I always want. Brews are the one thing I am always desperate for on this account. Oh shit, what? Potato cactus seed, can I grow this? I actually got the one in 1000 seed drop over just the straight one in 50 potato cactus. I mean, this works, I can go plant this, that's cool. All I need to protect this thing is eight snape grass, so I can let this thing grow, I'll see you in an hour. Rise and shine, potato cactus enjoyers. We have one more item on our list and we can finish this quest up, but it's a pretty annoying one. I'm gonna teleport to Shades of Morton and we're just gonna see how close I can get to this crumbling tome. No, we're so close, man. We're so close. It's right there. Damn. Okay, time to grind a bit. Slayer is the slowest side goal I have remaining, so I want to keep working on it. I've got an Infernal Mage's task right now, but I'm mainly just here to get enough tiles to get that crumbling tome right now. I'm back with 13 old tiles, and we can also telegrab this to save a couple more five tiles remaining, and we have every single item at this point. I won't be able to step foot in the death altar uh, with five tiles, but that is every single item off the list. We're locked and loaded with 49 tiles and we finally get our death talisman. This took over a day. It took way too long. We had some difficulties. Now we imbue this crystal on the death altar and we are pretty much done with the quest. Nice try, Dark Lord, but you're not getting out of there, I've I've decided. It took 1,300 tiles to complete Morning's End Part 2 and we actually get 60 back from that agility reward, which is nice, but... Pretty long quest, didn't even expect it to take that long. But most importantly, I now have literally every single requirement for Song of the Elves. Every single one, skills, quests, they are all done. I can now start this quest literally whenever I want. Obviously, I don't have the tiles to do so right now. This quest is monstrously expensive. It's gonna take some tile prep before I can do it, but man, does it feel good to have every single requirement. Finish up the last 2k XP to get this one. 77 agility. Song of the Elves is waiting for us at this point. We can see it, but there's a glaring problem in that this is the most tile demanding quest in the entire game. 
with my current amount of tiles, I am nowhere near ready for the investment that this quest requires, which leaves me with only one good option. Welcome back to my favorite segment, the next 10 days of my life. Our side goals from earlier, still in play. I wanted to hone in on 65 Slayer, but simultaneously create an avenue through Slayer to put the account in a much stronger position for the infamous boss fight we have coming up. You'll see what I mean by that. I also decided to use Last Man Standing to supply myself with Adam and Arrows throughout my entire Slayer grind. As we know, Last Man Standing is a bit tough on this account, limited mobility in PvP, plus not being able to win in games because I'm stuck wherever I spawn. Nevertheless, this is how I got my ammo. I even decided to take advantage of something during Slayer that would save me upwards of 15 hours in the long run. And there it is, S tier task, S tier task. An S tier task in my book, at least right now for what I'm trying to do is any task that drops this. This is an ensouled head, and that one ensouled hellhound head right there is equal to 1200 prayer XP. You get anywhere from four to six of these every slayer task, and I used to not be able to use them, but now that I'm high enough magic, I can go reanimate these after my slayer task, and that's five to seven thousand free prayer XP every task. It cannot be understated how valuable higher prayer is, and with no good method to train it right now, I have a chance to do it passively through slayer and have a much better chance of beating the song of the Elves boss fight. And this is how the next 35 straight hours of grinding looked like. like boulders here they they look like they're part of the environment jeez look at them dude they're massive <laughs> God, I actually completed a clue. No way. It's like 12 attempts deep at this point. I've unlocked so many steps. Let's see what we get from this thing. I think this is my third clue. It's pretty good. It's it's pretty good money-wise. If I'm not going to get anything unique, at least I got a pretty wealthy looking clue. 93 range. That's two full range levels I gained on this grind. Well over a million XP. We've spent quite a bit on clue scroll steps. Otherwise, I'd have way more tiles right now, but we've made some great progress. This is going to be the final prayer level I get from this grind, but man, what a climb to 58 prayer from 51. All right, I kept track of this. And between getting arrows, using insult hands, getting new tasks right around 36 hours to get 65 slayer dust devils unlocked black dehyde vams unlocked as a drop from those dust devils awesome to have that taken care of that was our main side goal and we're up to over 1400 tiles now now that we have a decent base of tiles to start song of the elves there's two final obstacles in our way a seed and a bar of metal quite literally. There's a long list of items you need for this quest, but two of these are particularly difficult to source and cause a lot of trouble. The Runite Bar and the Cadentine Seed. I really only have one option for each of these items. Magpie Amplings for the Runite Bar and Master Farmers for the Cadentine Seed. As you can see, both of these items, not exactly the easiest thing to get, especially the Cadentine Seed, I'd say, is especially pretty damn rare. It's a little deceivingly rare, because you can pickpocket a lot faster than you can catch magpie implings, but I started off my day by spending three hours straight at Puro Puro and unfortunately no luck on the Runite Bar, so I decided to go over to Master Farmers and try my hand at the Cadentine Seed. That's gonna beat me so hard. Every time I see herb seeds now in my inventory, I'm gonna think it's Cadentine and it's just not gonna be because the seed is so rare. I literally just sat here for eight hours straight and grinded out this seed. <laughs> What's up, man? <gasps> oh my god! What? When did I get these? What? I went over three times the drop rate for this Cadentine seed, but ultimately I did get it, leaving only the bar until we're completely ready for Song of the Elves. Dragon Impling! 
Cool. I mean, what I hate about this one is that I'm just hopping around and I'm not gaining any XP. I'm getting a lot of money though. That's that's the real benefit of this grind as opposed, oh, we got another magpie. And dragon dagger. Like I said, we gain a lot of money from this. Not so much XP, but money is still pretty damn useful for me right now. Coming up on three hours of Puro Puro, we are at 53 magpies right now. So we're well over double the drop rate. Both this and the seed, I have just gotten super unlucky on. Please just be it. Yes! Yes, I'm done. Oh, finally, dude. Let's go. Runite bar. We're finally, we have everything. We have literally everything we need. Every single thing we need for the quest. Jeez. Oh, where am I? Hello? Is there someone there? Hey. <laughs> Hi. What's up? I have a job for you. Ooh, I'm kind of tight on time. I'm, uh, I'm doing a quest, actually. <laughs> oh, you're doing a quest, buddy. <laughs> hey, you're gonna get me out of here, right? Like, uh, I really don't want to be here too long. I do have a thing at four. I need to be there at four. Um, so, yeah, if you can get me out before, like, four. How long has it been? 